Okay, it is 6.30, time to get started. Welcome everybody. I am Vivian New, uh, your host tonight. And we're very excited to have our first King with Native session in, since the pandemic started. Uh, we had our last session almost just a little bit over, just like almost exactly two years ago in person, back when you could still do such things. But super excited to have Dee here tonight to do our class on the basis of plant morphology for us. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to acknowledge that the work done by the Santa Clara Valley chapter of CNPS lies in the homeland of the Muwekma Ohlone, the Amamutsan Tribal Band, the Tamian Nation, and the Ramayatush Ohlone, who still live and thrive in this area today. We hope to learn from them and support their work to restore traditional practice and heal from historical trauma. If you are joining us for the first time with one of our events, we would love to know how you found out about us and where you are. So if you're comfortable with doing it, um, please share that information in chat. Doesn't matter if you're on YouTube or on Zoom, we're watching chats in both places. And we are part of the California Native Plant Society, which is a nonprofit environmental organization that was founded in 1965. We have over 10,000 members and 35 chapters spread all over California and Baja California. So we even extend beyond the boundaries of this country, not just beyond the boundaries of our state. Our chapter is the Santa Clara Valley chapter, which covers Santa Clara and Southern San Mateo counties. And I'm pretty excited to see that in the participants list, we have people from other chapters here too. So welcome to all of you. Um, CNPS's mission is to save California's native plants and their habitats, and that's done through science, education, conservation, and gardening. If you are not currently a member, we would love to have you join us. Um, you, that helps with our mission of conserving California's native plant diversity, and that also gives you some incredibly fun and wonderful membership benefits, which includes not just one, but two different journals, Artemisia, which is our scientific journal, and Flora, which is an absolutely beautiful um, general interest native plant journal, has a lot of great articles about gardening, um, different things going on around the state. Beautiful, beautiful magazine. Um, if you join our chapter, you'll also receive our Blazing Star chapter newsletter, which tells you about all of our interesting events, as well as articles about things going on around here. And then we also, if, as a CNPS member, receive discounts at participating lo local nurseries. So you get a bit of a break when you're going out to buy your plants. And it's very easy to join. You do that online, go to cnps-org slash join, and you can sign up right there online. Uh, we have a lot of events coming up uh, later on next and we all week from today. We have our members night which is a photo group sharing thing. We used to do that in person and hopefully next year we'll be doing it again in person. But meanwhile, it is simply Plant Adventures in the Pandemic Part Two because we had part one last year. So if you have time and you'd like to look at pretty pictures of plants or if you have pictures to share yourself, uh, you can sign up online. Um, on, you can get more information in our meetup group. Uh, and then the week after that, we have a talk, Picking Plants for Your Garden with Calscape. I'm actually giving that talk. And then the week after that, we're having a panel of, the, of people to talk about their favorite native plant books and resources. And we, we will also be inviting audience participation. So that one should be a lot of fun as well. And that is just the beginning. There's more going on. So go to our site, cnps-scv.org or meet up our, go to our meetup group and um, you can see what's going on. Uh, we also have a nursery which uh, is the way that we fund a lot of our activities. Every, every penny of profit we get from our nursery um, goes to running our chapter. And uh, it's the store, we have an online store, which is currently closed, but we'll be reopening on February 1st. You can order plants online and either have them delivered if you live between Belmont and San Jose, or you can schedule a pickup at the nursery. And not only do we have plants, but we also have t-shirts, books, and more. So. Please, if you are interested in getting some plants, take a look. Uh, if you'd like to get a weekly message to let you know what's going on, I strongly urge you to join our news mailing list. You can do that um, by sending an email message to this 
not, uh, the email address at the bottom of this slide, but you can also find that information on our website, which is cnps-fcv.org. I also wanted to make everybody aware that we have a horticulture scholarship now. Um, applications are due by the end of the month, so there's not much time left. But if you or someone you know is in a horticulture program and you are planning on pursuing a horticulture career with a focus on native plants, this is your chance to get some money to help you um, with your academic studies, $750. But you do need to apply by the end of the month. Uh, the, Information about that is on our website, cnps.scv.org. Um, you can also get to it through the URL that's on the slides, um, which is slash hort scholarship on our website, um, also through that QR code. So um, again, spread the word, even if you're, if you're not studying, if you know someone who else, else who is, please do share this information with them. And then just a little bit of housekeeping before I turn it over to Dee. Uh, please keep your microphones muted but you are welcome to ask questions at any point in the chat. Doesn't matter if you're on YouTube or on Zoom, we are watching both. And we will um, ask questions of Dee at the end of um, her talk or if appropriate, possibly during the talk. And Judy Fennerty will be taking care of that. Uh, I forgot to update the time that we expect to end. Um, we're hoping to end by 8.30, but it may go a little bit longer depending on how many questions there are. And also a reminder that this is the first of a two-part series. So next month on February 18th, also a Friday, same time, um, different Zoom session, uh, Dee will be teaching again the, on the basics of plant taxonomy. And I wanted to introduce Dee, who is an absolutely amazing, amazing person. She's been a long time chapter board member. She was a, uh, she's actually our current field trip chair and um, stepping up to fill in um, when the previous chair stepped down. Um, she's a former chapter treasurer. She is also a former field trip chair. Um, she is an active weed warrior at Edgewood Park. So she is a, a part of that, the amazing work that goes on there. She is now an adjunct instructor of horticulture at Foothill College in their environmental horticulture and design program, where she also graduated with an AS um, in 2006. She is absolutely passionate about sharing her landscape and horticultural experiences, which is part of the reason she's here with us tonight and um, in caring for California Native Gardens. And she is also very interested in sustainable gardening practices. So Dee, I am now turning it over to you. Thank you so much for being here and doing this for us tonight. Well, thank you very much for having me. Let's see, um, oh dear, let's see, got a, Press all the right buttons. Let's see. <laughs> uh oh. All right. So I have purposely um, put the slides on the left upper corner of the screen. Uh -oh. so if, there, if there's an interruption. Oops. Hello. All right. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me for starting the season uh, with uh, starting the um, uh, um, springs, well, the f flowering season. Uh, so could somebody mute? Um, yeah, I'm trying to find um, uh, the person who's making the sound. And Dee, there's a question already um, about whether or not the slides will be available. Um, somebody wanted to know because they, they want to know if they need to want. take notes. Um, it can be. I mean, it'll be uh, that. <sighs> it, probably. Um, probably you and Vivian, Vivian and I should talk about it on how that could be made accessible later. Right now, um, yeah, it, it can be. Vivian? Okay, yeah, sure, definitely. We, if you are willing to send them, we it's, can upload them later. I'll send a message to everybody um, who's on Zoom with the how to get the slides later. But the problem it'll probably be a PDF because this is a really big file. It has a lot of animation and stuff in it. So anyway, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Dee. All right. 
Okay, well, thanks for joining me. And this is the plant morphology basics class. And um, so what is um, plant morphology? Uh, what are we talking about? So it is um, a study of f the physical form and external structures of plant. Um, and basically um, to look at plants in detail to see the um, the leaf structure, the um, flower structures, you would need a hand lens or it's also called a loop, which um, there are all kinds of loops that's available online. And um, mm -mm. where is that? Go and then... So today, tonight's session is a bait is uh, we'll try and get a basic understanding of the following uh, things of um, plant external structure, the leaf type and features, uh, flowering parts, basic fruit and seed types. There's a plant glossary at the end of the slide, and we'll if we have time, we could look at some plant samples that you may have. Um, since this is Zoom, it, you'll probably look at your own samples and we could um, see, uh, have a s small discussion of what you're seeing um, on your end and talk about that. All right. So, so the plant structure, we'll start with the plant itself. We'll look at the root system and that comprises the of tap root which is this main part of the root system. And then you have the lateral roots, which is the outer, more finer um, uh, root system at the, um, that comes out of the tap root. Then you have the shoot system, which is um, everything from above the soil to the tip of the plant. And you have, starting with the flower, you have the terminal bud, which is um, this part. And then the node is the joint between all the flowering parts and the leaves. And the internode is the section that is between two nodes. So that, that's one node, and this is another node. And in between that is what you call internode, this, this little stem part. Then you have the axillary bud which grows between um, these joints. You have a terminal, terminal, terminal bud, which is um, growing out of um, other lateral sh um, stems. And we have vegetative branch. And then there's the leaf, which comprises of the petiole and the leaf blade. And then you have the stem. So th um, some of the um, terminology can be a little technical. Don't worry about that because um, you know, there are lots of books that you can lo look into. I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, so one of the books, this book here, has is very good. And I will explain this book at the end of the slideshow. I've done some pictures of um, showing you how to use it. All right. So here we have um, some stems and roots. And basically this is um, a rhizomatous root. It's a rhizome and here the roots come out of the rhizome. And here is advantage, advantageous root. And these are roots that are coming out of non-rooting tissues. So this is actually a ribes. And if you look at this, the entire plant is full of roots. Um, it, it's, it wants to root out. If this thing fell over, it would root itself in the ground and you'll, you'll get many, many new plants of the same one. So um, here is, so I'll be going back and forth on this website here called V Plants. Um, it's literally has a, most of the, um, uh, the floral and the um, plant and, and anatomical features. So for the root system here, um, you would look at the description of this is um, 
a tree would be an upright tree. You can have shrub form, ascending form, and a decumbent form, which is more lying flat on the ground. And um, this is oops, pro procumbent, which is lying flat. So, um, and this is repent, uh, stoloniferous, um, meaning stolons. And as but described down below here, you have stoloniferous rhizomes. You also have rhizomes. So there's many, many terms and many descriptions of plant parts. It can be very confusing and it could be very inundating. So that's why there are a lot of books out there. Google um, is very helpful in finding all the terminologies and pictures and diagrams. So don't get too scared about all, the, all these. There's a lot of pictures out there. And there's different uh, types of root systems. You've got corm, you got fibrous roots, like in the grasses, uh, tap root as in the carrots, and um, your turnips are one of the um, ones that have a, a tap root, and tuberous, which is usually the yams, um, um, plants like yams are tuberous, have tuberous roots. Okay. So here is uh, the leaf. What uh, a leaf feature looks like. You start off with a blade, and then with the blade, you've got the tip of the leaf, which is called the apex, and then you have the margin, which is the that runs along the entire leaf, and then you've got veins here, and you've got a midrib or mid vein, it can be sometimes called, and you've got the base of the leaf, which is this part to that part. And the um, stem that come that is um, the leaf stem is called the petiole, and then you have the axillary bud that comes between the leaf and this the um, main branch stem here. And then some plants will have a stipule, which is a modified leaf, and that's one of the um, one feature in um, identifying plants is they have all these little different nuances in terms of leaf, modified leaves, hairs, and things like that. All right, and here I grabbed this one just before dark. This is a fava bean, and this is one of the stipules. It has quite a lot of stipules along the nodes of, uh, of the plant. And here's a leaf type. Um, so so basically the leaf you have a simple leaf and a compound leaf that's what um, basically how you start identifying plants is what kind of leaf you have is it si a simple leaf or is it a compound leaf then you go off into um, the dichotomous key on how to figure out what your plant is so by understanding your different leaf type then you can go on to figure out the puzzle as one would say. So you've got the one leaf, which, which is a simple leaf. You get this whole leaf here, compound leaf, has multiple leaflets. And that's just one leaf with multiple leaflets. And, and then within the compound leaf, you would have um, how some people have always asked, um, how do you tell the difference between a compound leaf or a leaf that, um, a branch that has many leaf? So the most important factor in determining that is in a compound leaf, you only have a bud that comes out of the, out of the, the stem, the internode, and the leaf that comes out of, this is your petiole. And then in between the leaves, the petiole here and this leaf, there would be no buds at all. There should be no buds along these uh, this um, leaf stem. So that's how you determine whether that's a compound leaf or it's a, a, a simple leaf. And there it is. Right. So when we look at leaf arrangements, um, we have to look at um, how they are stacked on the stem. Um, I think most of you would, some of you may know that in the mint family, 
they're usually opp opposite leaves. So I think this is blocked. I'm going to try and move that up here. So we have three types of leaves, leave arrangement on, on the screen right now. So we have, this is called alter, alternate leaf arrangement. They kind of go zigzag like that. And from top view, it kind of has a little angle. And then on the opposite leaf, they're kind of, they're opposite of each other and they kind of stack up in a, in my semi world, they kind of alternate between each of the stack. And then when you look at it, it kind of looks like a crisscross when you look from the top. And a world is three leaves that are at, growing out of a node here. They kind of stack up in threes. And that's a world. It could be four or it could be more, depending on the species or the genus. And then when you look on top, it it's, um, looks like that. Okay, I'm going to bring this back down. Oops, you know what? I'm sorry. So there's a, on this uh, plate here, um, there's additional leaf type, uh, you've got imbricate and f uh, fascicle. So let me, oh dear. Good, sorry. Okay, so this is um, a manzanita that has imbricate leaf arrangement. So they look like they're stacking against each other. If you look closely, it doesn't have a petiole. Um, without a petiole, it's called sessile. And I'll show you that later on. It doesn't, not here. Oops. So that's, so compound leaf. There are many types of compound leaf. So we start off with a simple leaf that's just one singular leaf. Then you've got palmate leaf compound, which looks like a palm coming up. This is on a petiole with five leaf leaflets. And then you've got palmate leaf trifoliate turn, ternate leaf in short, meaning three leaves. So you've got your petiole and you've got one, two, three leaves. And if you notice this one and against the pinnate leaf trifoliate, the difference is that the pinnately is opposite of each other with also there's another petiole on the on the stem on the leaf here when where this one the ternate one does not have um, another petiole. Then you've got bitronate which is uh, two of these on each side one two that's your by by meaning two turnate so two turnate leaves and um, to make things more complicated the compound leaf also has um, odd odd number leaves and even number leaves so um, pinnate meaning that the leaves are opposite each other on a compound leaf and when it's odd the, the last leaflet at the end is only one leaflet. And the even would have two leaflets. So bipinnate bi would be, um, that's your first pinnate for that. And that's your second. Oops. So one, two is your, your bipinnate. And three would be one, two, and three tripinate so that's how you so you would have to count how many times it branches off to um, identify what type of pinnate leaf it is leaf margin so this is just a, a few sample samples of what uh, types of leaf margins you, uh, one can have there's many many types of margins ciliate is fringe fine hair 
involute is rolled in rolled inward on over the top and revolute is rolled inward under the bottom but there's many other terminate yeah. and then we've got um, additional leaf margin you've got crenate how I remember crenate is it looks like a bunch of C's and dentate for dentata or d dentatum it looks like a bunch of D's so there's a lot of little things you could um, kind of use to try and remember features of plants and it can be fun so as anything you can use to help you remember um, these features then you've got low in labata uh, the valley oak is uh, quercus labata uh, serrate meaning saw like tooth pointing forward as in serratum serrata um, these are more of the spe uh, specific epitaph name names for plants um, which I will talk about in the taxonomy class um, serrate you have multi serrated finely serrated or sign uh, finely toothed and then you've got sinuate which is strongly wavy and here are the many types of leaf margins you've got ciliate cleft crenate crenulate dentate dentic <laughs> there's many many um, types of uh, leaf uh, margin and usually begin with is your entire leaf is your simple simplest leaf you got m multiple types you know involute rolling inward but on the top lacerate looks like somebody lashed it all out so they're all very descriptive of what it actually looks like and then you've got leaf apices uh, which is the leaf tip and these are all the description of what a leaf tip can be and then leaf venation uh, there's quite a bit these are your basic um, arcuate would be leaves leaf veins that are all alternate they alternate they're not quite um, offsetting each other like in the pinnate leaf which is the the veins are opposite each other and then you've got the palm there it is and then you've got palmate leaf got the five fingers one two three four five that's your palmate leaf which is usually in um, the maples the acers usually have uh, the palmate leaves you've got reticulate which is um, describing the vein that looks like network and then you've got parallel veins which are for mostly or sh only in the um, the monocot family but there are some that are parallel and then we have here parallel vein this is a piperia transversa and you can see very clearly the the veins are parallel they don't cross each other right leaf bases so again there are quite a few leaf bases you've got arcuate which is when the leaf comes down to the stem to the petiole it has this little fleshy kind of wing like extension along the uh, along the petiole um, that's what you call attenuate and you've got um, one that has look, looking like an earlobe which is arcu auriculate the clasping type of leaf base where it actually looks like somebody is grasping clasping these the stem chordate means heart shape so if you look at it, it kind of looks like an upside down heart and then cuneate is when it tapers off without and then it ends abruptly mid stem or um, mid petiole hastate is arrow head like and then truncate is 
just look like somebody cut it right off at the end, flat, um, very straight. Sagittate also means arrowhead, but you, Sagittate seems like this one's drooping, whereas Hastate is more erect, more horizontal. You've got roundis, rounded uh, leaf base. Perf, perfoliate is, is actually meaning um, it going through the leaf. And then pel peltate is ending at the leaf. And then you've got oblique where both um, each side are not matching. They're kind of offset each other. So leaf surface. So here we have lots of leaf surface. And there are over 30 leaf surfaces. I won't go through each one, but the most... Um, usually you encounter is the farinaceous, farinaceous, which is um, white powdery like, canescent, uh, glandular. We have quite a lot of plants here that are glandular. They've got sticky glands. If you look at the end of the, uh, the, the hairs here, it's got a little round ball and that's the gland and it's sticky. And you've got floccos as in, um, you know, very fine felt like fe um, feeling um, there's many 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 <laughs> types of um, <clears throat> surfaces you got veluse um, you've got tuberculate tomentose strigose stellate the hairs actually end up like having stars at the end of it the hair splits into a star like um, feature. So, so it's very important when you look at the leaf surface to see what you're seeing and then um, then you can go on to key on key your plant or identify it. And here is some basic information. So the leaf surface on the top is called adaxial. So notice that I've um, bold the letter D and the bottom of the leaf is called abaxial with a B. So how I remember the bottom is B for bottom. As long as you remember that, then the other word is adaxial, which is the top. So that makes, that's how I try remem remember things. If you, if you remember one of them, the other one automatically becomes the other one. <laughs> so here is um, a close-up picture a macro picture of the chalk dudleya we have out in the garden and you see the white powdery um, feature here that's the farinaceous feature which is means white powder and then you see all these little round dots these are the stoma the stomata the stomate um, of the on the leaf surface and that is what helps regulate gas exchange on the plant And then I, this is a picture of a hummingbird sage, one of the flowers. And if you can look at it very closely, I did a really enlargement of this. As you see the little gland, the hair, and then it's got a little bubble. They all have these little dots at the end of it. Those are the glands. And you would describe this as glandular. So stem and leaf parts. And variations so we have let's see I'm gonna go here so we have um, different stem parts we've got bud scale which is the um, as a new bud emerges the bud scale protects the bud itself and it oh and then um, it, it, it it's it's a scale that covers the bud you've also got um, these holes here which are vascular bundle scars like if the leaf fell off last year the leaf fell off like in deciduous plants the leaf falls off and then you've got these scars you can look at and see um, the vascular bundles and those are what draws water and air um, through the plant and there's your leaf scar and you've got your internode between this node and that node that's a terminal bud. And here is a stipular scar. 
these are all lenticels in some of the uh, rose family like in the prunus they've got these little uh, lenticel which um, is one of its features in identifying and I think it is used as a um, for uh, probably for gas exchange and then you've got plants that are have bulb bul bul bills um, where they have these little bulblets as their re um, way of uh, reproduction it produces a bulblet and then it drops off and it sets seed or sets its root and makes a new plant these are all this is the bulblet as uh, onions do that a lot the allium family or the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the allium genus and then you've got tendrils which are uh, these are modified leaves that then um, used for climbing for vines uh, this is a spur they call this a spur and you've got thorns and prickle spine and glock some of these words are hard to just hard to pronounce glock kediate i guess so so what's the difference between a spine a prickle and a thorn so a thorn is pretty much very long straight and a prickle actually is kind of curved in like roses have prickles the roses don't have thorns um, and then you've got spines like in the picaringia the chaparral pea they have these little spines that stick out and this is one of the cacti cacti that have these little sp um, uh, features spiny features right so th now we go on to the flowering part does anyone have questions so far i'm gonna open it up a little bit we had a couple questions dee but um your colleague joe has been answering some of those rather well so i'll just read them out loud um can you tell us the preferred mag magnification of the hand lens and uh joe answered at least 10 times, a triplet is recommended to give you a focused field, that is, edge to edge. And the larger the, larger the width, the easier it is to use. I don't know if you wanted to add anything about hand lenses. No, that's pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. Thank you. And uh, also for bipinnate, what is considered the whole leaf? Uh, Joe answered the a leaf that is the part that falls to the ground. All leaflets are attached as there are no nodes within a leaf. Leaflets right. do not become detached yeah. unless they're ripped off. Right. <laughs> do you want to add anything to that or? Yeah, um, I could actually go back to that. Um, maybe later. Okay. I can click on, yeah, later. Okay. If, I think that right. was, uh, yeah, for the earlier leaf structure. Thank you. Right. That's it for right. now. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. So um, now we go on to the flowering parts. Um, I won't go too much of uh, what angiosperms and eudicot, that type of thing, because we can talk, we will be talking about that in the taxonomy class. Because in the taxonomy class, you would need, need to know what these are in order to figure out what plant you have. But here it is, your flowering part. Basically, you start off, here's your female part, which is the pistil. Also, um, also can uh, you can use carpel is one of the, another word for it, and that consists of the stigma, which is the tip of the um, pistil or carpel. You've got the style, which is actually this stem right here, and then you have the ovary, which is this organ here. So that makes the pistil or carpel. You have the stamen, the male part, the male part. And you have the anther, which is the little bulbous part that holds the pollen. And this is the filament that holds the anther together and it's attached to the ovary or to the receptacle. We have the perianth, which consists of the petal, which is 
drawn superficially drawn there and then you have the sepal which is the part that is below the flower which is that part you have the and then the petals um, collectively are known as corollas and the sepals when they are collectively known as calyx or calyx calyxes then you have the receptacle, which is the fleshy part that holds up the ovaries, the flowers, the reproductive part, the petals, and the, the sepals. Then we have the peduncle, which holds the, the entire inflorescence, the entire flower. That's the flower stem. Gets a little more complicated later. There's more to the peduncle. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So this is another flower. Um, so again, sepal collectively are called calyxes. Oops. And then petals co collectively are called corollas. You've got the pedicel here, which holds up the group of flowers. And you have the pedicel that holds up the single flower out of the group. So if your flower is a single flower with only one stem and one flower, the flower stem would be called a peduncle. The pedicel only appears to be um, is, is is used is when it's when you have multiple flowers coming out of one uh, one uh, the major flowering stem, the peduncle. Okay. This is a flower of uh, a monocot. This is a one of the lilies, and it. This diagram is a little confusing. I try to simplify it a little bit more. So you've got the stamen, the anther, and the filament, which is these parts. Now, when you buy Easter lilies, and sometimes when the flower opens and you accidentally knock the the anthers you get this yellow powder onto your cl white shirt or onto your clothing and it kind of stains it so that powdery stuff or all the pollen and that um that attachment to the anther um holds the pollen and i think some of the floors actually pluck all the uh, anthers off so that you don't end up um, getting your clothes or getting your table dirty or get dusted with it. Then you have the female part, which is the pistol, which over here, oops, excuse me, um, is dissected out to be this long stem right here, this organ right here. So you have the stigma, the style, and the ovary. And then here, tepal is used when your petals and your sepals look very much alike it's hard to tell the difference because their patterns are very similar and that's when you call the the petals tepal rather than petals and sepals whereas um a flower in um that are only has th um don't don't have tepals um, and their sepals are very distinguishable. That doesn't look like petals. They go. They go back to the regular name as sepals. So you have. So here's the three stamens, three petals, three sepals, and three pistils. And then you've got three nectaries embedded in this um, flower. And this is the Scoliopus bigelovii, which is the fetid adder's tongue and there's actually a mosquito gnat nectaring on it all right so pistol and carpal so um these two words can be used interchangeably somewhat it depends on the flora that you're looking at or who the botanist and how they're describing it so um so the pistil and the carpal contains the stigma, which is the part, stigma style and the ovary. And then the carpal is also, um, this is a top, uh, a cross section of the ovary and they describe this as one carpal. 
So the, carp the one carpal would need to also contain the stigma style and ovary. So actually it splits down in the middle here. That's the one carpal. And a um, pistol can be simple, or simple uh, pistol or simple carpal, or it can be compound. Um, like in the lilies, you've got two carpals, no, three carpals like I showed in the previous um, a flower of the um, fetid adratum, and then the Apiaceae, which is the carrot family, they have two carpels, and their seeds, um, the the reprodu uh, the ovary, the pistil, or the carpels are sitting side by side, and then there's a technical term for that kind of um, uh, 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 carp uh, for the type of seed it is and it's uh, called schizzle carp and I'll show you the picture later okay so here is a close to anthers and pollen and this is the anther and here it's split open when it's time um, when the anther the pollen is ripe to be dispersed it splits open and all the pollen falls out that's the pollen and this is of uh, the Clarkia ubiquilata, and uh, one of the Clark native Clarkias. Somebody raised their hand. Uh, go ahead. No? Okay. Uh, we're not. Uh, just a note to everybody: we're not unmuting right now. If you could put your question okay. in the chat, that would be helpful. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Um, then this is another anther of the rosemary that um, it's non-native, but, but look at the different types of anthers there are. This is um, an anther of and pollen of the hummingbird sage. Oops, spelling, wrong spelling. So that's the pollen, and then you have the anther, which is the black colored part of the. Uh, it's kind of out of focus. It's trying to get the pollen. You can't get one, or you can get one, but not the other. All right, things get a little more complicated. So we're looking at these flowers, like the dogwood, um, and poinsettias, and bougainvilleas. And the f you, you, we think the petals are pretty, but actually they're not petals. They're actually called bracts. They're modified leaves that look more... More, they are colorful and attractive and the flowers are actually are at the center of the bracts and here are the bracts of this is the dogwood and the inflorescence which is the actual or the flower part all the flowers are here and then this is what that whole but all this cluster is this is the actual flowers and then the single flower here is you've got the male part the anther you've got the filament here attachment you've got the petals here and then they did a dissection of this a cross section and that's the pistol and carpal this is the, this whole thing is the pistol carpal and it's usually found in um, dogwood poinsettia and bougainvillea all right, Com uh, asteraceae or composite composite flowers. Um, they're a funny. The flowers can be they are beautiful, but they've got two types of flowers, uh, inflorescences in in one um, uh, flower head or inflorescent head. So here it is. That's in the sunflower family, so, uh, commonly known as. And then you have the peduncle again, the flower stem, receptacle, the fleshy part that holds up the flower, the filaries, the flip, these, this is a name for the part that is the outer part. It's like the sepals on the other kind of plants, but the, um, the Asteraceae family or the composite flowers, they have their own names. Of course, they want to make it more complicated for everybody, <laughs> but um, there's different types of filaries. You've got imbricate, imbricate meaning they stack 
on top of each other like this. And then you've got unisariate, which is you need looking all the same and single layered. You got bisuriate, two layers. You got one layer here at the bottom, fillerees, and the top. So I think the Coreopsis um, has this feature in their fillery. So you have to look at um, the fillerees to determine what genus the flower is in. And then you have the ray flower, which is this part, which you have the claw, the pappus, the cross, and the akeen. This is the actual seed um, that gets um, blown away or gets dropped to the ground. And this is the disc flower. The disc flower is in the center. And then you have, on the disc flower, you have the stigma, the stem, stem, staminal tube, that's where the, um, the anther type, the, the male part of the flower, and this is lobe or petals, and the corolla tube, so these are the corollas, and again here are the papis and the akeen. So the ray flower and the disc flower looks very different. Um, oh, there we go. All right, here's um, some pictures I took. This is the narrow leaf uh, mule's ear, and this is these big petals are the uh, ray flowers, and in, in the center is your disc flower. There's a close up. See, see um, the little uh, disc flowers, and then this is the Hamilton thistle, and this is all. Uh, it's called rayless flower because they do not have any of the, the ray flowers. It's all uh, disc flowers. Same with this rayless ar arnica. And then um, just to dr um, drive this home, the flowering stems. Here's your pedun peduncle, and then this is your pedicel. So if you notice that the peduncle holds up all of the flowers in one point, and then um, don't forget the leaf attachment is called petiole. So you've got peduncle, pedicel, and petiole. <laughs> there it is. And um, there. here we go with the inflorescent type. Um, this is, I'm going to, so there are many types of inflorescence. Um, You've got catkins, which is um, male. You, the males usually have catkins ament. This is probably the female flower. Uh, glomerol, this is what it looks like. It comes up and it held up with a bunch of flowers here. Spadex with spathe. This is more like in the lily family. Um, and it's like the... Um, what is it? Uh, there's a white peace lily. I think that's what it's called. Um, also, the skunk cabbage has this flower as well. You've got thirst. You've got corms, simple compound. Compound when it branches more finely. Symes. You've got a simple syme compound and you've got a heliacoid like um, going off of each other. Then you have capitatum, like a head. And you've got panicle, raceme, if you notice. Oh, let's get rid of that, yeah. So a panicle would be, looks similar to a raceme, but then the panicles will continue to have more branched more flowers at the end of it where the ray seam only has like a single flower at the end and then you've got a single flower coming up a single stem coming up escape and then you have flowers coming out of the scape with the um with multiple flower heads right here 
um, like the um, like the primula or the um, mosquito bill or the dodecathian or uh, what's the other? Oh gosh, um, it's um, gosh, I can't remember the common name, but it's the primula uh, type flowers. Um, Judy, do you remember the dodecathian? What primula. is the common name? Primula. Star. Yeah, Pretty Pretty star, Pretty mosquito Pretty bills. Star, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, mosquito bills too. Yeah, mosquito bills. But um, shooting stars, I think a lot more people would know that too. You've got a flower that are in spikes, sukun spikes, sukun meaning on one side. Oops. And you've got simple umbel, compound umbel, you've got verticil. Many, so you can spend a lot of time looking at all these to understand what type of flower head inflorescence you have. All right, symmetry of the flower. So some basic um, um, features of a flower is um, when a flower that looks all the same, if you cut it into quarters, uh, they're called radial symmetry. So cut that into quarters and each piece will match the other quarter exactly almost and that is same with this other one you cut that piece you slip that all in and it looks it's the same but bilateral symmetry is different so you cut that horizontally in half and then cut that vertically in half and these two do not look the same. They are mirror, they look the same in a mirror on the lateral part, but when they're in the bilateral, they do not look the same. So that's how the pea family, um, the pea flowers are like that. Most of the other flowers um, most commonly have um, this radio symmetry. Then nectaries. Nectaries are glands that actually is a reward for insects or possibly even, uh, not possibly, of course, the hummingbird. It's a reward for um, pollinators to come um, pollinate the plant. Um, so um, it rewards the pollinator with some food and energy while they stick their head in or they crawl in there, they get, they get dusted with pollen. They go to another plant of the same species and they cross pollinate. And that's how you get um, uh, good pollination, good um, uh, chance of um, reproduction. So you see here, this is like a, in the lily family. Um, this one listed here, the tepal, because the sepal looks like the petal. So they call that tepal. All right, some comparison with a um, angiosperm and a gymnosperm, meaning angiosperm is your other flowering plants and the gymnosperms are your, more, your conifers, uh, to put it simply. So, but we'll go into that in the taxonomy class. So this is just a diagram, a comparison of the reproductive part of the flower. So you have got, um, you got the, the carpal or the, the pistil, your stamen, and then your ovaries here as um, uh, for reproduction. And then if you look at the um, gymnosperm, which is your conifer type of seed, is it's very simple. They don't have a lot of, um, they don't use insects to um, help with pollination. Mainly it's all wind pollinated. So they don't need extravagant features to attract anything. All it needs is just windblown pollen and it gets fallen into the, um, the embryo and then it gets um, fertilized. Here is the gymnosperm or conifer reproduction. Here's your male cones, your female cones. And then you've got wind pollination that goes into the carpal this is where they use carpal rather than pistil. And then you get the embryo developing and then it gets germinated and becomes a new tree. 
the, there are many types of cones. Um, this was one of our trips that we went to Kangaroo Lake and we found all these different kind of cones in the area. I don't remember all of the different kinds, but there's sugar cones, sugar pines there. Um, and yeah. And here, we go on to the seed. Oh, maybe I should go. Is there any questions about the floral parts? We were just having a little discussion um, about whether asters are the only family that has uh, ray flowers and disc flowers. And I, th I think we agreed that was the case, except there are some um, plants such as the horticultural scabiosa, which is in the same order and sort of, and resembles those or can be analogous to those. That was Joe's mm -hmm. contribution there. Did you have any other no, any, any thoughts no. about that? Um, also, uh, Joe noted of noted the flower head of the asters that the receptacle is the heart of the artichoke. So he mm -hmm. made that note when you were um, on that part. So there was also a question about um, an example of, uh, first example of symmetry was not mm -hmm. radial since it had five petals. I don't oh. think I caught that myself. Oh, okay, radial, but, right. I don't know if it could be split okay. But still. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, so we're having we're having a whole different conversation over here. <laughs> <laughs> and listening then? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. So we'll go on to compare um, so fruits and seed. We'll look at compare uh, an apple fruit with the cone. So these are the differences. Right there. All right, ovary position. So we have the superior ovary. What is the, uh, so part of all this, why we wanna know these things is it's all part of how to identify the plant you have at hand. Um, so do, and whether the ovary is superior or inferior will give you the certain plant that it that is that is um, what it is so um anyway so here we have the superior plant uh, the superior ovary which is if you note the sepal here sits below the ovary and the rest of the petals and the rest of the flower the inferior if you note note here is on top of the ovary and then we, of course, making it more complicated, you've got halfway, half superior, half inferior. So you have, if you note, the sepal here is midway, and the sepal here is midway, and there's different types of uh, flowers that have hypantheum, thick hypantheums, or thin hypantheums, depending on the type of flower or fruit that you're dealing with. So more ways to confuse everybody. So here is your superior uh, ovary. And then on this, this side is the inferior ovary. And if you look at the, um, the reproductive parts is above the seed rather than below the, the ovary, excuse me. They're above the, the ovary. And then you've got um, the parts that are midway, and this is half inferior, so it's, so if you know superior is below the ovary, perigenus is around the ovary, and then epigynus is above the ovary. And here it is. And here's a typical example of inferior ovary is your squash. And there's the ovary and the flower. And then, of course, the rose. Um, and there's your rose hip. And that's your dried up sepals and... Nah. Yeah, dried up sepals and probably the flower they're all drying out. 
all right flower to uh, flower to fruit so superior ovary as you can see right is below the ovary and this is what your tomato actually is it's actually sitting upside down <laughs> so here's the peduncle I would have to say actually the pedicels because if you notice a tomato they actually have mo uh, multiple flowers on one flower stem so I would say this is a pedicel anyway it's me being picky so that's your just to see where where the flower and the fruit kind of matches on um, on on the flower the tomato is a berry and then here's the apple apple flower and this is what the fruit ends up being it's a poem and you can see this is the actual pedicel or the peduncle and this is where the sepals and the stamen styles end up at the end of the apple um, there's some basic fruits and seeds and this is the fleshy fruit You've got druplets or aggregates aggregates fruits are like your raspberries and blackberries and each little fruit here is called a druplet um, berries are a fruit that have seeds inside like the tomatoes multiple seeds a droop would be your avocados um, cherries or droops and then poems are your apples and pears and then you've got the dry fruits which um, if you remember the um, composite flower the the sunflower you've got the akines that's the seed of the um, sunflower but seeds that are um, basically um aren't fleshy and depending on how it's attached they're called akines then you've got um capsules see that are um seeds that are encased in capsules and there are different types of capsules um that you can see um this would likely be the the like the irises that we have um, I'm not sure the poppy um, what is it the I think the Matilia poppy might be like this I'm not sure um, and then um, I don't Beth is suggesting it. wind poppy as well poppy yeah anyway so um, when the seeds are encased in capsule when they dry they kind of pop open and uh, split open and that's uh, the type of uh, seed head you have so there and then you've got multiple other kinds of fruit um, seeds to call how it splits open circumcisal you've got follicles um, the follicles would be your um, milkweeds legumes obviously the the pea family i'm not sure which family would be in low mint acorn would be your oaks and samaras are your maples uh acers um what else what is, there's another yeah anyway the acers family the acer genus and then uh, um, ash i think as well yeah, ash right yep um and then you've got sk schizocarp uh, carp, which is looking like this and then you got silic that's silic and silicone this is mainly in the mustard family that have seeds like that and we have another screwy kind of seed it's called the screw bean biscuit mesquite oh let me take that out and the 
technical term for this type of seat head is called tightly coiled. As in, I looked it up. This is uh, what Jepson uses, Jepson manual. They call this tightly coiled. So there's, I think they're getting away from two technical terms to make it more friendly, user friendly. And that's the mesquite flower. This was taken out in Ash Meadow. And then we have sedges, we're getting to the end. So this is um, sedges. Um, ooh, can I see that, right? So we have spikelets. So this is one of the spikelet off of the, this bunch of um, inflorescent. And then you've got the bract, which encases the spikelet when it's, with, when it's immature. And then you have the calm, which is kind of the, the stem of the grass, not grass, sedge. And then um, you have the scale. This is a sedge flower. You've got a scale that covers the, um, the ovaries, the reproductive part. And then you have uh, perianth bristles. Some, some sedges have these features, not all. And then you've got male flowers, which is called staminate flowers. And the female flowers is called pistillate flowers. And then you have one of the, uh, the seed here. And this is cross-sectioned with the ovary and the perigenium, which is the actual hard casing of the seed, the, the husk of the seed. And then you have grasses. Um, you've got the ligule, which is um, between where the blade joins the sheath. It's that section right here. And there, there could be hairs, there, there would be maybe no hairs, there's all kinds of different uh, features that you can identify, use it as a, um, for ID in your, your grass. You've got the calm, which is the stalk, the blade, leaf blade, you've got the sheath that actually is, that wraps around, clasps the calm. When you peel corn, you can, there, you can actually, um, have that little wrapping around the stem or when you or gra when you're taking removing some grass you've got a node here and then you've got fibrous roots and then in the inflorescence here um you've got the pedicel because it's a flower and these are covered with the, gl the first gloom and the second gloom so when this is immature, all these in florets are actually encased in these glooms. And then when it pops open and matures, it, it grows upward and outward. And then depending on the grass you have, um, there may be more or less um, florets um, in your um, inflorescent. So you've got Oh, uh, sorry. So your first gloom, second glo uh, gloom, you've got the rachilla. You've got a nerve. They call this a nerve. Sometimes we just call that the, the, um, the main vein because it's one of the veins, but they call it nerve. Um, the lima is the outer part of the floret. And then you've got the pallia, which is the inner cover of um, the floret. And then some grasses will have it on, which is like a little prickle, like a little neat. Um, some are hard, some are not, some are soft. So that's one of the features. Some could be bent. Um, so these are one of the features to help you identify the, the grass. And this is the floret. Again, you've got the pallia, the lima. If you notice, the pallia is smaller than the lima, and um, this will close up to encase your, the ovaries and the reproductive part. You've got the flo uh, filament that holds the anther, and then you've got the stigma, which is the part that receives pollen, and the ovary is down here. And this is um, a close-up picture I did. I was studying uh, the Melica species, very <laughs> um, brave of me. And so this is the gloom that encases this floret 
and this is the lima and this is the pelia and then you've got the anther and they're attached there's a filament but you can't quite see it and then I took out the ovary and this is this fluffy thing is the stigma and then the ovary is here all right so this is the virtual plant glossary that I have and these are live links to the actual website so um, when I get that set up it should be a live link um, on the PDF as well um, so here so um, this is a really good uh, book that um, James and Melinda Harris had um, done it lists it goes it's illustrated and it has a section that is a glossary and there's pictures for every description it has for every word it has it has a picture for it so it's not only has a, a written description it also has illustrations to show you what it looks like and what they're talking about and then the second part of the book it has terminology by category so root system stem system leaves surfaces inflorescence flower parts it's very very detailed it's really great to understand the different parts of the flower and the plants um here you know the reproductive parts the fruit types so here's a sort of a um, cross section of the illustration and here you have dentate the denculate you know it, it shows you exactly what they mean and what it is and then here's by the category you've got the stem section leaves you've got surfaces and so on and um, this is a listing of the resources and citation of this slideshow um, these are all live link, uh, links that you can there and that is the end of the presentation I'm gonna maybe um, do we want to uh, could you show the front of that one uh, plant identification terminology book again sure this one yeah we just had a question I did put the in the chat but just so people could see okay what that book is. It's got the oaks on the cover. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, we did have a question going back to conifers about how you tell male and female cones apart. I don't know if you can flip through your pictures again on that. Yeah, sure. This one. Yeah. Um, so this, these are all female cones. The male cones are usually very small. It's like half an inch some are even smaller depending on the type of conifer it is and it's just um full of pollen um during um, um during spring when um the pines are have pollen everywhere and after a while you can look at the ground you got you see these little brown um kind of like little fruit or little cones those are the male cones that have dropped off after they finish um, spreading out their pollen so they're very tiny i should have had a maybe we can google shall we google that let's see what is the question the male cone Let me be careful <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the male cones would look like that and the female cone obviously is the big one that is brave googling that on live tv so yeah. <laughs> especially with the word male <laughs> uh so we did a question which is better vplant.org or the book that was recommended it there's no better it depends on um if you if you don't want to buy the book 
the internet is the greatest place to get information. Unless you're in a no cell area, I think. If unless you're out in the field, you have no cell phone. But are you willing to lug all the plan all the books? <laughs> some of us, some of us are. So right. for skiing, it's nice to have that um, in yeah. front of you. And I know many people have the old Jepson manual just for the glossary. Right. And a question yeah. about so uh, even if it's the e floor is the one that's updated, people do like the old um, hardback right. manual. So. Right. Uh, so, question about the jets and go ahead. So, can I elaborate on that first question was, so I had looked up carpool because I want to make sure I knew what, what, uh, you know, uh, just to clarify some, we had to pull three or four books out plus the internet to determine that it's what, it, what I was explaining that it's used interchangeably. <laughs> so you want to cross reference because you got different botanists and different people, authors that have different ways to describe things. So there's not one singular book that is recommended, but multiple would, you know, you cross check, cross reference. Is, and that's is true for wildflower books too, I think. Yes, definitely. Um, can you go down to the, the, the list of resources, the slide with the resources? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, at least the first one, yeah. So um, do you, uh, I had a question, do the terms in the book, in this book, match Jepson more broadly? Is the terminology oh. generally <laughs> consistent across botany globally, which is oh, sort of answered? That's another project. <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> um, I would cross reference it and then I'll look at it, read it, and then I'll forget it. Um, it's depending if I'm actually doing my own project um you know there's i mean even i looked at books from india botanical books in india oh my gosh the, the terms they use is i had to recheck my grammar and recheck it to, different around the world it's different mm -hmm. i can say that mm -hmm. yeah so there's no one book right it's a, yeah it's culture i believe that depending on the culture and how the schooling schooling culture is is taught um you know right. you've got the british system you've got the american system plus you've got colonialism mm -hmm. that then is a mixture of different cultures um, and then it's english latin all mixed together with greek possibly mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah we had one question about a specific um color or, uh, or texture glaucus and someone answered uh -huh. that it was blue green or sea green is that your understand your recollection of that glauca is usually blue green if it's sea green wouldn't that be ir not iridescent what's it what's that what's that word that's very green Bellish gray, green, green, or blue color is the is the yeah. definition. Glauca, usually like um, Glauca is blue green, like uh, that Festuca Glauca. Yeah, blue. If it, yeah, that's you'll have to consult Jepson mm -hmm. and see what what they use because again, you know, the English language mixed with other um, interpretations, you know, like, right? Yeah, interpretations different. So one question I know is, is easier. Uh, what type of equipment, your photos are awesome. What type of equipment do you use for the close up such as the rays and discs flowers? Do you use a macro lens? Oh, well this one, I actually used my iPhone with my hand lens <laughs> just yesterday. <laughs> and um, the ray flowers actually, this one, I think this is with my, my big nice camera, my good camera. <laughs> Not my iPhone. Yeah, these were, I think, I think this was the iPhone, the Arnica. And this could be the iPhone. I think this one, um, I think it's, I don't know, sometimes I don't know myself because it looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. Um, but the macro, I, um, use um, 
my macro lens when I need to, but I find my iPhone when I'm doing presentations like this, I don't need to blow it up on a big print or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's doable. And this one, I just cropped it. It's mainly a, that same photo, but I blew it up on screen like that. And just a reminder to everyone, we have another presentation of yours that was um, recorded uh, taking close up pictures with an iPhone. So I'm going to put that in the chat. Um, that's on our YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. Some great tips there. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, last question. Uh, oh dear. Uh, got a few other things here. Uh, what do you think of the machine learning tools and apps such as iNaturalist and Seek? Oh. I, I don't use Seek, I use iNaturalist. I'm very impressed with um, the stuff I get confirmed almost instantaneously if I have signal. It's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the weird stuff that we've been looking at, um, you know, some of the rare plants and like the astrag, I guess the astrag. Anyways, but I've occasionally been very surprised that it got, got it pretty good, even with insects and, and fauna. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. It's it's they nail it really well, and I'm I, I'm using it more and more. Uh, the iNaturalist one. I've kind of strayed away from Cal Flora. <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a great um, iNaturalist is great because of the community and the yeah. conversations you can get into, and there's so many experts on there. Right, so. learn a lot. And I actually use INET to ID it first and then go to Cal floor and then put my ID observation. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we had a question about not to go too long because I think we wanted to end at eight, right? Or just in a few minutes here. Okay. I'm not sure how long you want to go. Yeah. Um, but we, um, we had a question about the flowering parts of oak trees. And uh, I don't know if you have a slide on that. No, oak. Um, I do not have a. F so hang on, let me. Let me bring out where is the um, here. So. The male oak tree, the cat can look something like this, mm -hmm. and obviously the female part, the the over the, pistillate flower is very tiny. It's, it's like a little disc set somewhere on the upper branches in a node um, in, in a single fla floret or several floret. I can't quite remember, depending on the species. Um, let me see if, let's see where's my, I think it's so many, it's ridiculous. So oak, uh, flower, let's see what comes up. Surprise! What comes up uh, in, in images? So this is how I use the web. Oh, here it is. So here's your male male flowers, the catkins. Oh, guess what? Friends of Edgewood. <laughs> Isn't that nice? This is the um, female, the pistillate flower, the female flower. See, it's a single um, flower sitting on a node and it could be in a bunch and this is the male catkin the male flowers there in yeah does that answer the question i think so um that should be good let's see so um there was a question also about um Someone had came from New is here from New England and was asking if there is a similar keying kind of thing online, similar to I assume they're talking about Go Botany, which is a, a from the Native Plant Trust in New England, which has a really great key. And I suggested the Jepson Flora, but it's somewhat different. So if anybody is actually in the East Coast, check out Go Botany. Um, very good website. I would database. say wouldn't. <clears throat> Wouldn't iNaturalist also work for, it works internationally. I oh, sure. It's global. Yeah. yeah. It's global, not a key so, though, per se, I guess. Oh, not a key, but at least you got, I don't know. 
that's yeah that's still totally different i mean my god florida and other places are you know each each floor has their own keys no mm -hmm. yeah otherwise it would be very hard <laughs> so um there were some questions about the structure of ferns i don't know i know the leaves were covered yeah that's a whole i thought about doing the ferns but that is just a whole another gamut because mm -hmm. the reproduction system is different how it, uh no that's another class <laughs> and same, same is true with mosses and bryophytes yeah too. moss and briar yeah because i was tempted to do that and i said and th my slide was going up to like 60 and with all this stuff i wouldn't be able to move my slide if i it was it was starting to to lock this tonight Mm -hmm. my 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 slideshow was starting to lock up meaning re really slow so we're just doing yeah um i think that's all we have some uh, great really good definition of glaucus may refer to powdery fuzzy sometimes waxy whitish gray bloom found on surface of leaves it's i always think of big berry manzanita leaves because i think of glaucus especially because the specific epithet is Art artistaphilus glauca so um yes uh, yeah stop good. sharing is there any i'd be more than happy we still have time so i'd be more than happy to take any questions or i don't uh, see that uh i don't see too many too much else here right now but um i do maybe we could just uh, could you describe what's coming up next uh oh taxonomy mm -hmm. so taxonomy is a study uh, of why plants are named or uh, why, why they're given that name is to figure out um, why they're called that way. And through, I, so, um, what is the technical term? <laughs> Taxonomy. So that is um, going to be. So is, is the branch of science concerned classification, of special organisms. So it's classifying like us all humans like to dump things in the bucket. So it's a classification of plants. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you're, not it's a science of it. you're not sharing anymore, but that's the class coming up next. Right. right. So when we do taxonomy, when you've taken this class, when we talk about leaf surface, uh, how the nodes are arranged or how the leaf are arranged, are they opposite, are they alternate, are they fuzzy? That's how what part of the key of then ending up with the, the plant that you have, that you want to ID. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sleuthing. Um, sometimes it's a lot of head scratching because um somebody uses different verbiage different language you know how you describe something um maybe you wouldn't use the same language to describe that thing mm -hmm. so sometimes it can be very ambiguous and plants are called ambiguous <laughs> like <laughs> leptocyphin <laughs> ambiguous <laughs> right <laughs> so it, it's quite fun you know when you start doing taxonomy and 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 you know, you get to the plant, you get to the names, and it's like, aha, oh, I see. Or it's like, it's it's a real joke, and we all laugh, and, you know, it's quite fun. Because it's, I, I call it, you know, like, um, was it, uh, God, who's that detective? <laughs> My head's not working. Who's that detective? Sherlock Holmes. Right, right. <laughs> So we look forward at some point to getting back to our live um, conversations during King with Natives classes, which uh, Joe Cernak is the chair for that. And uh, you help out with that as well. So someday we will return to our Friday night King with Natives in person, I think. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, so then this talk, Vivian, can you tell us, is the talk next Friday, the next? Um... No, it's next month. It's on uh, February 18th or 19th. Um, but I also want to just remind everybody about chat because you can save out the chat. If you go to the chat uh, portion of your screen, there should be a dot, dot, dot at the very bottom. And if you click on that, it'll let you save the chat because I know there's a lot of good information there. Yeah. And I'm actually just double checking. Yeah, it's the, so the next session is Friday, February 18th at 630. And you can get 
it on our meetup group. It has the information on how to RSVP, or I should say, get the Zoom information, or you can just go to YouTube because it'll be on YouTube again too. Yes, that question is now showing up in the chat that our YouTubes, all our um, YouTubes appear instantly after the programs. So just go to our YouTube page, which I will put in the chat. So you should be able to find it on our chapter website. I just want to say hi to Cindy Rosler. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are glad that we're doing this on, on, on Zoom so that uh, they can participate from other parts of the state. So um. I hope it wasn't too dry. I get a little <laughs> nervous and I just go off the deep end. That was great. That's great. Everybody appreciates you doing the work. Um, and appreciate thanks to Joe for answering questions in the chat. Joe Cernak, our King with Natives chair. Um, yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, definitely. Oh, hi, Sue Kelso. <laughs> all right yeah well um i'm still what we still got time I, uh, does anybody want to chat or anything where i'm cool with chatting we could turn off the uh turn off the youtube yeah. i think if you want okay i'm gonna say goodbye to you folks on youtube i'm gonna end that um streaming now so thanks for showing okay. up and hopefully hopefully we'll see you guys on youtube uh next month and 